I'm Erica Hill. Thanks for joining us on the story. Donald Trump, as you just heard there, calling the election rigged again, ratcheting up his claims over the weekend as his running mate, Indiana Governor Mike Pence, seemed to counter, taking a slightly different tone on NBC. Leaks is releasing what appears to be uh, some transcripts of Hillary Clinton's uh, three three of her paid speeches to Wall Street financial heavyweights, including Goldman Sachs. Those take story captivated the nation, conjoined twins separated after more than 24 hours in surgery. What an intense moment, an emotional weekend for the parents of Jaden and Anais McDonald. Those are the 13-month-old conjoined twins who were separated Friday morning after a marathon surgery lasting more than 24 hours. So you just saw their parents, Nicole and Christian, greeting one of their boys for the first time after that long, risky procedure. And so I have so many thoughts on that video. I have right. to tell you, it just, it sort of gets you right in here when you see it. What more do we know, Ashley, about the circumstances surrounding that moment? You know, it is what it is, effectively. Uh, this was something that this father thought not only his own child would benefit from, but that maybe those 78 people across America who die every day from drug overdoses might benefit from, that maybe among those 78 people who died, angry that that father would put his son in that Mm -hmm. circumstance and others who are just elated that finally this is the kind of thing that breaks through and will highlight what has become an epidemic in this country that is killing people at an outrageous rate. There is no doubt that we need to talk more about that and to focus on it and to figure out a better way to deal with it so more children are not put in this situation but when you put an eight-year-old in that moment and, and the father said to him, look, I asked him if it was okay to post it online, and he said yes. Can an eight-year-old really make that decision? Well, you know, I think we have to separate out, the, which so many parents can't do. I think the other piece that's a little harder is that this was a shocking situation, in hugs and understanding, and this moves it to another place that right now may not be the right thing for this child. In some ways, it's a little bit of uncharted territory, too, because this, this young boy is eight years old. He's just lost his mother. He says, okay, you can put this video out there, and I understand what you want to do, Dad. But now this lives on. I mean, now 34 million people have seen him in this vulnerable, traumatic moment. Could that impact him and his healing and his process as he gets older? Well, you know, there, there's a lot of pieces to that. Certainly, um, you know, in a term... And as I mentioned, Ash will be back with us, too, in the next hour for more on that, uh, including more... So while it wasn't very funny and clearly not a lot of comedy when she brought that Trump supporter up on stage. Probably not surprising that Amy Schumer went there. Long ago, she voiced her support for Hillary Clinton. And politicians, let's be honest, have always been a great source of material for comedians. Have things changed, though, in 2016? And do how do you agree to disagree and politely change the topic of conversation these days? With us now, Brian Moore back with us as well. So, Brian, you really, this is great because you have two hats in this for us, right. right? So you're a Republican strategist, but you're a comedian. And yeah. we know that politics is like comedy gold in oh, many yeah. ways. Are we at the point, though, that you can't joke about politics anymore? Was the angle Amy Schumer was coming at, uh, from. So it, it, it's a balancing act. It always is in terms, of, in terms of turning off the audience. It can be tricky. If you are alienating people, then that is the wrong side of the line. So that makes sense. You don't want to make them feel stupid, but in some right. ways have we become, Robin, overly sensitive when it comes to these political conversations? Now it seems we immediately label people like, well, if you support Donald Trump or Hillary Clinton or even Bernie Sanders, I know exactly who you are. Yeah, and I think the audience can be a huge arena or can be one-on-one, -on -one, your personal audience sometimes, interpersonally, beyond the bigger picture of what's going to happen to the country. Facebook and social media. I mean, Brian, we didn't know, you know, I didn't know as much about people I probably went to high school with or to college with as I think I may know now based on some of their posts. Right. Oh, it, well, every interpreted. Of course. It's, it, things written are always harder to interpret <laughs> than things, you know, make, you know, being sarcastic mm -hmm. and making wisecracks and then people taking them seriously yes. and flipping out and just going absolutely bananas. So, so then that's a new we, development. So how do we deal with this, Rob? There's, there's the social media aspect of it, which that can actually be cleared up. You can say, look, I was kidding. It was making a joke. Hopefully you don't say something like, I apologize if I offended you because it's not really an apology. <laughs> um, but what about if you are having a conversation with someone? How do you politely change the conversation? Do you just avoid the topic? Like with the distraction approach, like how about those myths? You know, and just like, let's just to, you know change the topic you may say a person will be very pr um, honest and say you know what a lot of these things are just making me so uncomfortable and I want to keep some of this private and I want to just kind of step away from this right now and I want us to still like each other 
Yes. <laughs> let's, let's be friends. Kumbaya. There you go. I like the kumbaya. Let's all hold hands and move forward. Robin Goodman and Brian Oyster, great to have both of you with us. Thank you. Thank you. You'll have to let us know when you're Police in Ohio said they may have a serial killer on their hands. Thankfully, he is behind bars. This is with Ashley Banfield, which premieres tonight. So you're here with a little bit more on, on not just the show tonight, but this story, which, first of all, so you I know. spoke with both his ex-girlfriend and his ex-boyfriend? There, yeah. Listen, if anyone's going to give you insight as to what goes through a serial killer's mind as they ply their trade, I guess these would be the two. Um, but here's the thing. Sean Great has not been to court, so I can't call him a serial killer. He calls himself a serial killer. He has confessed to five of these murders. to talk about. He wants you to know Strangely. that these are all the things he claims that he has done. Interestingly, yes. And at the same time, if you ask him if he's remorseful, one of the reporters who had the shot at asking him that question, his answer was perplexing. 50-50. 50-50? That was his answer. 50-50. Oh, -50. Uh, who does this? What kind of a mind is that sick and twisted? Do you remember how we got here? Do you remember how we got to this guy? That crazy 911 call mm -hmm. that we all were just so, uh, just gobsmacked listening to that woman who was whispering into the 911 phone uh, saying, I've been abducted and the man is lying beside me asleep. Please come rescue me. Right. That's how we found this guy. Which that in itself is wild. Uh so that's how we get here. So the police come, they rescue that woman, and then walk us through so people remember what happened after that point. They rescue her. Let's call her the one that got away. Mm -hmm. um, thankfully. Thankfully. And of course, that's a crime scene, that abandoned house where he had uh, allegedly abducted her, bound her, assaulted her for more than 24 hours. And they look through the house and they found two rotting corpses of two other women. One of them bound, gagged, and rotting in a closet. The other one face down in the basement in a pile of garbage, covered in garbage. And he told the police, these are my victims, okay, uh, I'll, you know, that's me. And then said, and there's a few more you might want to find too. My verbiage, not his. And right. led them to three other women. It is just crazy. Yeah. I mean, in some ways, though, we have to say, thank goodness he did for their families. Yeah. Right? So they know something. You'll have more on that tonight. You also have another guest who's coming in. Yes. Uh, we may know her as Claire Underwood. Yes. Or the, or the Princess Bride. Or right. Sylvester. Or Forrest Gump's Jenna. Exactly. But Robin yeah. Wright, who is a phenomenal actress, but also. Question that I don't know the answer to. <laughs> but she's going to tell me some secrets because they're filming House of Cards right now. Oh. Kevin Spacey and Robin are on the set, and she's got something that she's going to drop uh, that she really? thinks is, yeah, going to make me laugh. As if I didn't have a enough reasons to tune into your show tonight. You just threw another one in for me. Hey, you can, um, you can, uh, what do you call it? Binge watch me. I can do that. <laughs> Live. I'm in. I'm in. <laughs> Ashley, we're so excited that tonight is the night and the beginning of a very long run, so we're very excited for primetime. Just on the story, Forensic Files is next.